what's good YouTube and welcome to the house if you are ever in your life spending your money on a rumored OCG ban list you need to check yourself your wallet and any credibility you might have over into an insane asylum because I don't think this is one of the worst buyouts if you're doing it for other reasons than a rumored ban list but blaster blaster has been bought out you see one listed at 265 the rest are 545 the rares on ebay as well at three dollars you would have to buy something else from uh this dollar 50 in order to be able to buy it you'd have to buy something else from the seller who's high rated same with card rush pretty easy to do actually you could just buy their three so we already see plenty of rare blasters running around three pages of them even though it says 10 prices uh i guess some of the prices are the same maybe but really you went and bought out blaster all the other dragon rulers seem untouched uh redox over here you actually have near mints uh, a dollar if you find something else from core tcg despite its quote-unquote price you see two dollars here two dollars here uh pretty easy to get you see a price bump there though somewhere i guess maybe something happened with it uh title as well you see the same bump same time uh 244 so maybe everything did get a little bit touched on the secret rares but the prices are just already cooled off yeah super game sync you can buy them at a dollar six each and uh yep similar bump and then curvature acting on a rumored ocg list really really like this is a pass format with a lot of potential it could be potentially the closest thing to goat format to get hyped in the future for people to look back and learn resource management and the ability to play back and forth i could see that it's one of the most popular pass formats up there with teledad and goat yes so highest rarity not the worst investment in the world but if you're doing it just because of a rumor shame also something i noticed uh when looking at uh secret blaster i i want to ask you guys if you know anything about the situation because i can't figure anything out about it guy has zero percent feedback on 1028 sales so i don't know if you can actually buy from him i haven't attempted or tried but uh a lot of his stuff seems to be deals location texas actually but uh something else i noticed from him is he has drolls at 15 deals that almost seem too good to be true compared to the market 15 you have two drolls versus 20 yet that zero percent feedback on sales is this man actually allowed to sell uh can you buy from and in my comment section would you buy from somebody that looks like they're in this situation i have no clue maybe it's just because they haven't sold in a long time it says uh no sales in the last year but 99.6 percent lifetime so perhaps they're a legitimate sale seller and they're just trying to get back in the game and feedback would you be buying from this person that's listing under let me know in the comment section down below if you have any information what's going on with uh his listings because he's the lowest on several things like uh like our secret blasters so i really don't know whether to take these prices credible or not in his listings but his his record seems clean and good maybe it's just that he didn't sell for a while makes sense right an example though of the ocg ban list the real ban list not a rumored ban list affecting our market in the past is should all construct the ultimates used to all be 30 you see the is slowly chilling down slowly slowly chilling down because of lack of sales is the unlimited first head's still trying to hold near 30 but these people don't want to hold on to this forever and the only way it sells out at these high prices if it actually got peeled off on one of our ban lists used to way higher was the regular ultra from mega pack already back down to six so yeah it can affect our market but it might not affect our gameplay even if it happened in the ocg it doesn't mean it happens here so please chill out on buying anything because of rumors from the ocg no matter what kind of source it might not really affect something over here but i will give the credit though e dragon's not the worst investment uh ever black whirlwind uh revolley of buyouts huh the ultra sitting here at 1750 versus market price of 10 it's also 17 new listing on ebay how do i feel about this one there they got a searcher for whirlwind right and black wings have had uh prominence in the past 
I don't think it's going to be breaking the meta, but I do think there are going to be good players that randomly have a Synchro they can't get rid of brought out on them, and they're not going to beat it. And that's going to happen uh, to, to several people. I think Fraser Smith actually made a post like that. And I... I don't think it's worth the price, but Black Whirlwind reminds me of Toon Table of Contents. You can have several copies. A lot of the copies uh, are going to be relatively higher priced. The common itself is too. It, it feels, despite having a few more copies, Toon Table of Contents-ish of being a fan favorite, although a more degenerate fan base's fan favorite. And then on top of it, the Black Wings do actually have history in the competitive game, so... I can see why people jumped on this. Uh, I don't expect it to hold prices like these, but uh, maybe the Super is considered higher rarity, being out of Turbo Pack and will hold some more significant value than what it once had. The Ultra Rare, I would think, would creep back towards 10, but who knows? Who realistically knows when you're talking about, you know, stuff people are actually passionate at and will throw their wallet along with their heart at. And Permanence is down five more dollars from last Market Watch just a couple days ago. This feels good, man. I'm really happy that you guys might get it cheaper even in time for Nationals. The WCQ, it keeps falling. No telling when it might scoop back up because of the WCQ or not. But during the offseason, this will fall. I, I just have to reiterate, broken record here. The offseason, meta prices fall. You have 2,000 duels that traveled out. They need to cover travel expenses. They're not playing for a month and a half. These cards are just sitting there. And and there's no regionals there's no regionals only local so a lot of people end up selling off their cards then you're going to continue during that season to see this fall but no no tell where the ride's going to take it before the wcq so nice to see coolant if you did need this for the wcq it's, it keeps going cheaper if you're playing it there you need to pick it up sooner than later this ain't bad compared to where it was at in the 80 range widow anchor similarly dipping just a little bit more than what i showed it last I'm just saying, it's nice to feel this. The The show is over. There's no more regionals. People not going to the WCQ are selling their cards off. They don't have events for a while. And there's pr usually some kind of a banless update after Worlds. Rest in peace, dinosaurs. You didn't deserve it. Uh, but still a decent deck. Uh, I, I just... I don't know. It's it's a real weird ballpark that we're about to enter. A, a whole new world, so to speak. I want to go back on Junk Forward and say I do think this is better than the Butterfly for one reason that resonated in my comment section. You can make MX Saber Invoker with this man's. So even though, you know, you don't, you might need to commit a secondary normal sum to it at some point if it's dead in your hand. Whereas the Butterfly gets out, the Butter Spy gets out for free. Junk Forward has potential with Invoker, which is advantage, which matters more overall and your Goki deck. So that's why this card's better and still sitting pretty high overall. Uh, definitely. But I see a random light play one for a dollar if anyone wants to take a leap of faith in light play before 6-6, six, six, uh, 650. I usually don't trust stuff like this for tournament play though. Up to you guys. A card somebody sent me is Malefic Cyber and Dragon that I thought was still around $6, but the lowest near mint over here is actually $9.38. It's crept up over time. We actually see, uh, that doesn't say near mint, it does say NE, maybe new. Uh, no, condition is used. Let's find the cheapest near mint over here on eBay. Near mint, $7.50. And it's not a bad price overall. I, I hadn't looked at them really since they were six, and it's just a one-time printing out of a pack. It's a very big body on board with a field smell. Overall, low low risk, high reward in some points. How much? What's this level? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Level ten overlay, not bad. That we did, you know, get some hype around the rank tens recently, but not for actually overlaying. It's not a bad price for a card that's so old that has one printing. And that's just kind of it. There's a low quantity. Even with a low demand, the low quantity will continue to boost the price up over time till it sees a reprint. So don't freak out over its price or anything. It's just, it's not really in, I, I want to say it's not in the realm of collector's cards, but it is kind of a based on the movie and show kind of thing. Hmm. Because this, do you guys think that this, could be a collector kind of pack, the movie pack. I don't know. I'm skeptical, but this has held stable value over time. 
Another card that randomly spiked in the comments, uh, one man's is listed 20, holding the line at $5, is Blue Dragon Summoner, which when sent to the graveyard from the field, you can add a Dragon Warrior Spellcaster type normal monster, aka Exodia Limbs. I don't know that there's another reason this this got troll bought out, but over here on eBay, the lowest near mint is also $4. So if you have it, you picked it out of bulk, might want to sell it now. I always pick these out of bulk, all of these guys, because they were uniquely in one starter deck and haven't had a reprint, and I don't think there's any signal for a reprint. So just a really funny common that's gone up <coughs> for uh, maybe funny reasons. I don't know. Let me know if there's a different reason besides Exodia Obliterate. And finally, a card suggestion right now. Falling down as a lot of people left 60 card decks, left their Light Swords. 40 card Light Sworn is not the worst deck. 60 cards can still operate without Grass. Yes, it was a power card. Yes, it was four of the cards. But highly underestimated card, highly underpriced card. It's not like Giant Hand where it naturally got phased out. It still offers power and uh, will be fitting in multiple decks in the future like Infernoids when they resurface. So... Do keep that in mind. $4 here near mint on eBay. Also nearing $4 over here. The once powerful prize card, it has fallen. But keep in mind, as this kind of continues, it's uniquely in Battles of Legend. I don't know when slash if we'll get another reprint of it. You might want to slowly trade for these and pick them up and just have a pile ready for when the hype begins again around it. Thanks for watching today's Market Watch, everybody. I know I'm asking you guys a lot of questions in this one, such as, like, would you buy from a specific seller? But I do want to include you guys more, and I actually do want to hear your thoughts because I'm curious. I feel like, personally, I avoid this seller for now and wait to see what happens. But there's good deals on the table comparatively to the market, especially with Droll. And then your NTCG players care to take care of you when, if slash when you didn't receive. But he also seems to just have good sales. Uh, 99.6 lifetime feedback just hasn't sold in a while an inactive account coming in hot yeah it looks like 03 15 2017 so uh for me i don't know i i feel like maybe there's deals to be had but also as a you know i don't want to waste my time and money uh, on something i i know i'm asking questions like that but i sincerely do i know the online trading place can be a scary world and i'm interested to see how you guys handle these kinds of situations as well thanks for watching everybody